point. Now we all do? Excellent. Excellent. The, um, I'm not uh, to uh, my normal sort of uh, accelerated speed of thought. Uh, I had the uh, misfortune to get mugged last week in Madrid. And um, they managed to take my iPhone. That was all they had. Uh, they could have had a lot more, but obviously they got disturbed. But it meant that I did get bashed around a little bit around the brain and uh, through here. So uh, I did think about going to the emergency room in, uh, in Boston today, but I figured I'd probably catch worse Logie bugs there. So um, if I don't come across as completely normal and speedy, just bear with me. Um, having said that, my version of slow isn't slow. Um, I'll apologize in advance if I speak a little bit fast. Um, I don't mean to do this deliberately. However, if it deeply upsets you, I suggest you leave now. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do today um, is talk a little bit about imaginative, but most importantly talk about this whole area of enterprise crowdsourcing and actually how we prefer to now have it be called collective intelligence. Um, it turns out crowdsourcing is more mob sourcing. And nobody really wants me. Mobs are good to spread people up. Mobs are good to like sort of have riots. Um, we're really looking about intelligence and the intelligence of the collective, so I'll share that. But just to do a quick little, um, a, a quick task. Um, right now, how many people here play an instrument? Show of hands. Um, okay, how many people here have sung in a choir? How many people have done chemistry? Some level? <laughs> Like a minute as opposed to organic playing with cocktail drinks. <laughs> <laughs> you may have misunderstood the question. <laughs> How many people have been to Japan? How many people have I could give you? What's really interesting is that these are just a sort of bunch of random questions. But right now, if you stick a group of 100 people in, or 50 or 60 or 100 people in, it turns out that we've almost got the answer to every single question. Um, the scary math that we're doing, with, there's a lot of scary math um, behind all of this. So there are 30 people in the room, and I'd like to think about what is the likelihood that two people will share a birthday? Okay, the likelihood of two people sharing a birthday. Um, if you know the answer, don't put up your hand, it'd be few, but if you don't know if you're guessing, say, how many people think that it's, let's say, less than 10%? Let's show you How many people think that it's more like between, let's say, 10 and 30%? How many people think that it's, let's say, more than 70%? And by the way, I know the right answer. <laughs> There's some really weird math that goes on when you go into the collective, particularly at an abundance scale. Uh, so let's do a quick test. My birthday is the 3rd of March. Anybody else 3rd of March? Okay, when's your birthday? June 6th. Anybody else June 6th? When's your birthday? 8th August. 8th August? Haven't had a hit yet. <laughs> but out of 30 people, you'd have a 70% likelihood of a match. And sometimes it's scarily work within three or four people. But the reason why the math is different is you might be thinking that it's about, well, okay, it's my birthday, who else shares it, 1 out of 365. But now it's not. Now we have three people, so now we've got to match 27 against the three. It turns out that that branch of mathematics is Bayesian mathematics, Bayesian probability, and it just shows that the numbers are all bigger. So there's a really weird thing that's happening, um, and it looks weird because it's not a sort of innate human intuitive thing that's going on. Um, however, right now, what we've become deep experts in is understanding the collective, understanding uh, abundance, understanding how networks work, but then the most important thing, and it really is the most important thing, is how do you take that knowledge and then apply it to do something useful, be that the creation of new drug molecules, be that the creation of new composite wings for Bombardier Aerospace, um, be that generating new insurance, risk insurance products for Chubb Insurance, because that's what becomes useful. Because if innovation um, is not just about ideas, innovation is about implementing things that deliver value, clearly what we're trying to do with this collective intelligence power is that apply it to be something useful. So, We're talking there about the collective intelligence. Um, this was a presentation that I would have given apart from the fact that I was um, covered in blood. <laughs> Very pleasant. Um, what I'm going to do then is just get a brief introduction to Manginatic for those of you who don't hear us, and for those of you watching this in 10 years' time. Hello. <laughs> but actually, this is a really uh, this is another important one, and I'm just going to throw some, some concept. If you look at the notion of abundance, right now um, there's uh, some work done by uh, Franz Johansson on something called the Medici effect. How many of you have heard of the Medici effect? So um, with the Medici effect, this is looking at that knowledge comes through the intersections of different disciplines. They were referring to the Medici period in, um, in, uh, in Italy, where pretty much they mashed together all kinds of sciences and arts, and they came up with tons of new things. 
One of the ways that intersections really have power is that you pretty much intersect people's thoughts and ideas. <coughs> and this right now, we're basically having an intersected conversation with me talking, and you'll have a chance to have questions later, and everybody's listening. And that gives us one set of intersections. This thing here, recorded, stuck onto YouTube, maybe transcribed, can then go onto the internet. And now you have the possibility of millions upon millions of intersections and being created around this content with people that are complete strangers, and it could be in 15 years' time. What's happening, this huge abundance of, um, of sort of technology is allowing us to create this huge abundance of intersections, and this is really how the world is changing in a very, very rapid way. Um, so what I'm going to do, um, I'm just going to uh, go through Imaginatic, describe this human brain power piece in a little bit more detail, look at the collective, and then I'm going to describe some case studies. I picked out some case studies from the pharmaceutical industry, um, there's good examples about how this thing has worked in practice. And then I've also got some uh, recommendations for enterprises looking to take it forward. 